You can watch me when I fall, when I cry, when I get shot, when I go to jail, when I die. You can watch. Your homie Gab is in the building. The shocking death of a star. The whole world wants to know what happened, and every minute counts. Now, for the first time, go behind the crime scene tape. With computer-generated forensic graphics and true-to-life reenactments, follow the investigation as police race against time to solve the case. In this episode, Tupac Shakur, rap superstar at age 25, brutally gunned down on the Vegas Strip. The arm came out of the back door and it started firing into Tupac. Learn how doctors help Tupac fight for his life. He's had a right lung removed and he remains in critical condition. And how police missed crucial chances to find the killer. The police made so many mistakes during the investigation, it's difficult to catalog them all. Go deep inside one of the most notorious celebrity shootings in history. There's a lot of truth to be told, questions to be asked regarding that night. Next, on Famous Crime Scene, Tupac Shakur. It's September 7th, 1996. Tupac Shakur is in Las Vegas with Suge Knight, head of Death Row Records, to attend the Mike Tyson-Bruce Selden fight at the MGM Grand. We were sitting ringside watching the fight and Mike Tyson and Selden steps into the ring, the bell ding ding, and 50 seconds later the fight was over. Mike knocked him out in the first round. Tyson and Pac were, you know, good friends, so we was in a pretty, Celebratory move. So we um, proceed to leave at this time. We're going down Las Vegas Boulevard trying to get to my club at the time. It was called Club 662. We were directly behind Sugar Pot, and then our car was uh, Frank, the bodyguard, and two guys. And they were going to a party. They sort of were cruising to get there. They had some time. New York, yeah. L.A., just yeah. the West Coast. I want the East Coast, too, girl. And these gals are in one car, and they turn and talk to them. He had said, hey, Tupac, Tupac, where you going, where you going? And he said, we're going to the club over to 662. Go over there. The convoy hits a red light at the corner of Flamingo and Koval. Two cars stop in front of the vehicle carrying Suge and Tupac. Tupac's bodyguard pulls up directly behind. With Suge and Tupac focused on the women on their left, they don't notice the late model Cadillac pulling up on their right. So now it's completely blocked in, and there's absolutely no, nowhere for him to go. The arm came out of the back door, and it started firing into Tupac. Bam, 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 bang! And once it stopped, all you saw was all of this smoke going up in the uh, air. It definitely seemed like everything slowed down, and I just remember thinking, man, they shooting forever. And the car just took off. I grabbed Pac, I pulled him down. I got shot in the head with a... I still got a 45 bullets an inch to my skull. Shot fired. I repeat, shot fired. Possible victim. This unit in pursuit of vehicle. Be assistance. Two bicycle cops, and they hear this boom, 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 lots of shots fired. So they take their bikes and call for backup. I had actually jumped out of the car and ran up to the back of the BMW because I thought that they were dead. There was absolutely no way in the world that these guys were alive. They had to have been dead. Too many bullets had gone through that car. Well, to my surprise, the car made a U-turn. So I ran back, jump in the car, and make a U-turn as well. Both bicycle cops take off and follow Suge. Meantime, Cadillac gets away without anybody knowing. Suge was jumping mediums and 
blowing his tires and frantically trying to get away. How that car was even driving is amazing. Okay, amazing. This car actually came to a stop at Las Vegas Boulevard in Harmon. And the center of the Las Vegas Strip became the main scene. The cops arrived on the scene. They didn't know what had happened. They saw this shot up BMW, you know, screaming glass, you know, blood. They pulled everybody, including Shug, out of the car, and Shug didn't want to get out because he wanted to stay with Tupac because he was injured. At that point, Tupac was still conscious. The police didn't know whether he'd been shot or whether he was involved in the shooting. I guess out the car, I tell the police, I'm saying, hey, slow up. They got the guns rolled out on us. I'm saying, look, I'm shot. Hey, shot, slow up. They say, S you want to get shot again? Hey, be quiet. There's a lot of police all over the strip. You know, they, they came out in full force. Oh, we, we need an ambulance. Get out right now. Don't move. Shug was on the ground. And I said, that's the CEO of our, our record label. He's a victim here. So the police let uh, Shug up off the ground, and Tupac was still sitting in the BMW. And for whatever reason, the door wouldn't open from the outside. They couldn't get Pac out the car because they did not open the door and take the seat cut off, so I did. So he opened the door, and we pulled Tupac out of the car, and we laid him on the ground. The ambulance approached, and he's laying there, and he takes a breath, and he crosses his hands just like this over his body. And he goes, and that was the last breath I ever saw him take on his own. Tupac is barely conscious as EMS workers load him into the ambulance and rush him to the University Medical Center. With the injured evacuated and the area around Suge's car secured, police begin their investigation. Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard became the focal point for the police, for ambulances and everything. We were cuffed and interrogated right down the Vegas Strip. You know, we got tattoos and whatnot, so... It was like, what gang you in? And they was like, who did you see? Can you give us a description? Witnesses at the shooting scene tell police that Tupac and his entourage had beaten up a man earlier that evening. Supposedly payback for a run-in between the man and a member of Tupac's crew one month prior. After the fight in the MGM, one of Suge's uh, homeboys came over and he whispered into Tupac's right ear. Well, when he whispered into his ear, Tupac shot off. They ran up to this guy and he started throwing blows at him. The rest of the entourage uh, approached him as well and he uh, started, you know, kicking him and, you know, fighting him while he was down on the ground. Suspecting this may have been the motive for the shooting, police speak with security staff at the MGM, but they can provide no details. Security did not take an incident report because the person they were kicking and stomping on, he said no, he wasn't going to press charges, and they didn't even know who the person was other than they had his first name, Orlando. All right, we're here. Going and we're walking. It's 20 minutes after the shooting. Tupac and Suge Knight are at University Medical Center, where hospital personnel work to stabilize Tupac's condition. Their biggest problem? A bullet has passed through his right lung, causing the area to fill with blood. In order to drain it, doctors insert a tube through skin and muscle, between the ribs, and into the chest cavity. The vast majority of thoracic trauma that occurs, that's gonna take care of your problem. The blood vessels will uh, contract, the bleeding a lot of times will stop on its own, and that's all you have to do. They believe they had him stabilized, but apparently the level of internal bleeding was more significant than they realized. Meanwhile, police are on the hunt for the shooter's car. We are looking for a suspect vehicle which was described as a white Cadillac, newer model Cadillac. That's all we have on it right now. We have our crime scene analysts who's gathering evidence. The police made so many mistakes during the investigation, it's difficult to catalog them all. Number one error was why one of those bike patrol officers didn't stay at the scene of this shooting on Flamingo. You've got witnesses who might have taken off, you've got, I mean, you've got all these people, and then they're scrambling after the fact. Dozens and dozens and dozens of people drove through the crime scene by the time they closed it off. It was contaminated in every way. 
probably totally useless. In the 20 minutes before the shooting scene could be secured, casings left from the shooter's gun were run over and scattered by speeding cars. Some were damaged, others rolled yards away into gutters or otherwise disappeared. They didn't get any fingerprints off the casings. They weren't able to get forensics on this, and the evidence in this case was just very little. Ballistics evidence shows that the shooter in the white Cadillac bullet into the rear door, five bullets into the front passenger door, several through the front passenger window, and one into the windshield. Now he's dealing with the sergeant, and I was told it was a 40 caliber Glock. We're going to continue this investigation. Hopefully, we'll come up with something that makes some sense of this unfortunate incident. The cops were there all night long. There was one witness, Yafa Fula, said that he could identify the shooter. Yafa Fula was an old friend of Tupac's, and he was riding in the car directly behind the one that Tupac and Sugar were in. So he was closer than anyone other than Sugar. Yafa Fula, who was in the front seat with me, was staring out of the window. So he saw the Cadillac before it even approached the car. And he told the police, right off i saw who did it and it's stunning to think that okay he said that and they didn't say yeah who is it but they didn't they said okay we want you to come in and make a statement and you know at some point in the future they didn't even set a time detained on the street by police tupac's entourage are anxious to know their friend's condition they had us sitting out on the vegas strip for about two hours and uh they just let us go everybody went to the hospital definitely worse than any of us could imagine. They had breathing machines on him. He was bandaged and everything. In an attempt to stop the internal bleeding, doctors decide to take the damaged lung out. They make an incision in Tupac's chest. Then part of his rib cage is removed, allowing surgeons access to the area. The lung is collapsed and blood vessels tied off. Then it is clamped, cut, and removed through the incision. But the internal bleeding persists, and doctors simply can't find the source. Rap artist Tupac Shakur is reported in critical condition this morning in a Las Vegas hospital. He was shot while riding along the strip in Las Vegas. It's 9 a.m. in Las Vegas. America is waking up to discover that Tupac Shakur has been shot. Police chase down leads after working all night at the crime scenes to collect evidence. Tupac has spent the night in the hospital undergoing multiple surgeries. What are Tupac's wounds as far as you know? His wounds are he's suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and also has a wound to, to his, his thigh. Um, he's undergone uh, two series of surgeries. He's had a right lung removed. He's back in his room and, he, and again he remains in critical condition. Those bullets did a significant amount of damage to his body eternally. The first bullet hit his right pinky finger and went through his hand. The second bullet hit his thigh bone, ricocheted into his abdomen, and ended up floating in his pelvis. The final bullet entered his chest underneath his arm and became lodged in his lung. The Las Vegas police had a very difficult time getting Suge Knight to agree to an interview. It took days. I mean, they should have held him that evening, but he had promised to come back. He stalled. Finally came in three days later with three attorneys. If anybody would have seen the shooter, I mean, Shug would have had the best view. Shug somehow didn't see the shooter. He just dummied up totally. He didn't know anything about anything, and he wasn't giving him anything. If you knew who killed Tupac, would you tell the police? Absolutely not. Why not? Because it's, it's not my job. I don't get paid to solve homicides. I don't get paid to tell people. If the authorities wanted to question me and talk to me, I would never talk to the police. If it's anybody who wouldn't say anything, in order to keep their mouth shut and don't believe in the snitches and the rats, it'll be sick night. We would like anybody who might have seen something other than the people who were there um, to come forward and, and enlighten us. They're telling us they didn't see anything, they don't know anything. It's been four days since the shooting. With no other leads, police revisit the brawl at the MGM and try to identify the beating victim known only as Orlando. Suspecting the fight could be related to Suge's gang ties on his home turf of Compton, California, Las Vegas police contact authorities in Compton. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department reached out to Compton police and said, hey, we, we could use help. We want you to ID this guy. 
My partner, Tim Brandon, was asked by Las Vegas PD to go there and help identify the subjects involved in the beatdown. Then they showed him the tape, and he immediately recognized Orlando Anderson as the guy that, that was beat down during the incident. This guy was from Compton, a Southside crib. At the time, we were investigating him on another murder where he shot the guy in the head. Word began to reach the police that Orlando Anderson and his little crew of guys had been involved in the shooting. Orlando Anderson, he's a ruthless killer, and that's the type of guy that they were dealing with out there in Vegas. Well, but I don't think they had that any idea of that at the time. It was the sixth day. They'd lost a lot of blood. They couldn't stop the bleeding internally from that chest injury. They had done two surgeries to go in and try to stop the bleeding and then it would start up again and that, that second surgery they couldn't stop it completely. I was sitting outside the room. This is his mother, Afeni. She sat there and there was just like an uncomfortable silence and then she put her hand on my knee. She put her hand on my knee and she patted it and said it's going to be okay Frank. It's going to be okay. And that's all she said to me. And I started crying. That was it. And then um, he died September the 13th. At 4.03 this afternoon, Tupac Shakur was pronounced dead. I was definitely crushed. And my whole world was uh, lost. It was a major loss. You know, it, was, it wasn't just a friend. It was, it was my little brother. Weeks have passed since Tupac Shakur succumbed to his wounds. Las Vegas police are finally zeroing in on their prime suspect, Orlando Anderson, with an assist from the Compton PD. So my partner Tim Brandon came back and we decided in a two-week period to put together this massive gang search warrant. And we did this so we could help Las Vegas with their investigation. So Las Vegas police went down to Compton. Uh, one of the detectives on the case actually talked to Orlando Anderson. Orlando Anderson, he wouldn't say anything about Tupac's murder. I don't know anything about that. No, I was not involved. I mean, I'm like a victim. You know what I'm saying? I feel, you know what I'm saying, sorry for him. Vegas let Orlando go and said there wasn't enough evidence to arrest him. Basically, the Compton police felt a little bit frustrated. They were convinced that there was enough to charge and convict Orlando Anderson of the murder, but they could never get the Las Vegas police to file. Other leads also run dry. After speaking with officers on the scene, the police's main witness, Yafu Fula, had said he would give a full statement to detectives. But promises to meet with the police are never kept. And two months later, Fula is shot in the back of the head. Yafu Fula's murder is the most troubling because it happened so quickly, and he was the best witness. Without having any witnesses or anyone being able to identify the suspect, it's essentially impossible to solve this thing. For two years, Las Vegas police struggled to crack the Tupac case. Then, another setback. Their only legitimate suspect, Orlando Anderson, is murdered in an L.A. shooting, leaving them with virtually nothing. As for other theories, from the beginning, rumors have circulated that Tupac's rap rival Biggie Smalls ordered the hit, or that Suge Knight may have been behind it. There are a lot of conspiracy theories, one of which is that Suge Knight ordered the hit because reportedly Tupac was going to leave Death Row Records. I don't know if I buy into that. I think it would be pretty brazen and risky to be in the same vehicle with the target of the hit. If somebody said that I had something to do with it, I didn't take it as a point where it bothered me. I took it as a point where that got to be the most stupidest mother in the whole wide world. Ultimately, Las Vegas police dismissed the theory that Suge had Tupac murdered. Some questioned the department's desire to solve the case at all. I was told by LAP detectives that when they went over to Las Vegas to talk to them, that the Las Vegas cops told them privately, look, we've been told that they don't want us to solve this crime. I was told by our Arab at Metro that it would be bad publicity having all these hip-hop people coming in for a trial. I think it goes beyond it's bad for tourism. I don't know. Somebody didn't want to solve it and it didn't get solved. 
Well over a decade later, the Tupac murder remains unsolved. And without fingerprints, eyewitness testimony, or the murder weapon, there's little hope police will ever officially solve it. When asked for the official comment on the case, Las Vegas police will only say, quote, it remains an open investigation. He had something to say. He had a message to deliver, and he was going to get that message to the world one way or another, you know, through life or death. There's a lot of details, a lot of truth to be told, and questions to be answered. We call him that night. I think at the end of the day, everybody needs some type of positive closure.